I'm Terry David Mulligan, and this is a Tasting Room Radio, um, year 15. Uh, started in a barn on the Naramata Bench, a studio in a barn on the Naramata Bench. And strangely enough, that's exactly where I find myself today, in Mill Bay, in what had been a barn. And obviously, I can tell now that the concrete that's poured behind me, uh, there were stalls. There were sheeps and cows and horses and rats and whatever. Um, but that's just filigree. Uh, I have Curtis Colt uh, has joined me uh, here on uh, Tasting Room Radio and on a Zoom. And uh, knowing it was a Zoom, I uh, shaved. <laughs> and I put on, well, actually, these are my bratty clothes because I was walking the dog. Um, uh, tell me about your... Curtis, your two years. I saw you. I saw you at the um, the OK uh, heart of the uh, wine country uh, poor at um, um, uh, Terminal City Club, and you were the first human being that I had hugged outside of my family in two years. How, how do, uh, was that? Your first step out there? That was uh, that was one of the few, and I'm glad that I didn't and don't have COVID and, and give it to you because that would. <laughs> That that would have uh, yeah made me feel quite bad, but uh, um, it's great being back at it at uh, uh, tastings and uh, um, and events and seeing that things are being done you know safely and uh, you know all of us are kind of putting our best foot forward and uh, um, yeah it's just it's it's a really exciting time right now. But I mean, did you hunker down well? Did you what was what was life like? Life was, uh, uh, life was, uh, um, you know, a, as odd as it was for everyone else. You know, my, my day-to-day -day life had been, or is usually, um, you know, doing events, uh, doing wine trade shows, moderating seminars, um, consulting with restaurants, doing staff training, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that had obviously gone by the wayside, um, you know, much of the in-person stuff. And, uh, you know, the good thing is that, you know, I used to work for Sean Heather, uh, as you know, uh, I ran Salt Tasting Room in Gastown for many years, and yep. uh, uh, Sean famously uh, is a proprietor of the Irish Heather, which is a very important place to the city, and, uh, you know, Sean, I, I remember in 2008, uh, when, uh, um, you know, the the... Uh, when the markets took a turn and everything and he said you know we'll be fine because you know people drink when they're happy people drink when they're sad and so <laughs> you know there is um, always room for wine I ended up doing a lot of online uh, workshops and, and things like that I ended up uh, um, working with an event management company out of uh, out of Toronto and they usually did you know staff retreats and um, you know um, incentives for uh, executives and that sort of thing and so you know, these companies, these largely financial institutions had uh, still, you know, their budget for Christmas parties and, and getaways and everything. Um, and so we just tweaked it to doing online um, events and tastings. And so often it would be me assembling wines, shipping them across uh, Canada legally and illegally. Um, and, you know, getting winemakers to zoom in from all around the world. And, you know, I think it also taught us that the online tasting world, um, you know, I, I don't think it's going to go away, um, you know, just because we seem to be at the home stretch of, you know, deep COVID. It, you know, the, the fact that we see that, you know, you can have a glass in hand and have a winemaker from halfway around the world talking to you and, you know, taking you through it. It's still better than just reading a little tech sheet or looking on, you know, a, a website. And so as much as we love in-person events, and that's what I do. I think that, uh, you know, the virtual events are going to be here to stay as well. And how will all of those uh, events of the last two years change uh, top drop as we know it? Will, will it be vastly different or slightly? You know what? I Not as different as we expected. Um, you know, I one of the things, so we took two years away. Um, one of our things is, you know, we, we have room for 40 international producers uh, uh, every year and our, our mandate is that uh, principals have to be in attendance, whether that's the winemaker, proprietor, um, you know, the, the person working in the vineyards or so on. Um, and when we had uh, laid it out and, you know, put out a, a call for applications in November, yeah. our thought was if we couldn't get 
principles, then we were not going to do it. It just didn't, doesn't make sense for the size and scope of what we did. Okay. Um, fortunately, we had a lot of enthusiasm and we have 40 amazing uh, uh, producers. Um, you know, we are fortunate the mask mandate is, you know, gone for the moment. And so that makes things a little bit easier. Um, we have reduced the capacity of the room. So there is just a little bit more elbow room and, and breathing room. And the good thing is, you know, we're at the roundhouse. It's a, it's a nice big open space with yeah. those windows and, and, you know, nice and breezy in there. And so hopefully that will help with people's comfort level um, as much as having a few, a uh, uh, couple glasses of wine, you know, aids the comfort level as well. Yeah, uh, how's your comfort level? I'm good. You know, my uh, my <laughs> wife and I have both been very conservative with things. Like we have played by the rules. We've been very you know, tight. I have been, um, you know, visiting. Uh, you know, it took a, over a year before being able to visit my mom, um, uh, who is in you know Alberta, and um, you know, waiting until everyone has had their vaccinations and everything like that. I still, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm. I live, uh, um, you know, in the heart of Vancouver. When I'm on the bus, I'm still wearing a mask and 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 all of that. And um, and yeah, it's it's fine. I don't think I've had COVID. Um, that that's that's you know how I've missed it. I don't know. I you know we've been very supportive of restaurants. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have you had a cold or a drippy nose or? I've had nothing. Wow, well, my God. Okay, fine. I've had nothing. All right. Yeah. I want to. I want to be next to you. Okay. Good. This is good. <laughs> He's Curtis Colt. He is one of the. Um, co-founders and uh, co-leaders uh, of Top Drop. Um, Top Drop 22, are these previous bookings from a previous Top Drop that didn't happen? Some of so them? what we did, um, so in 2020, we were, I think we were about a month away um, and we had decided to um, make the call. It was about midway through March that we had made the call. Um, you know, it was pretty much a couple of days after, you know, that iconic day that Tom Hanks got it. And then, uh, um, you know, the NBA canceled their season and, you know, that day and a lot of events were still holding on. And we just thought, you know, we know that this is something beyond what a lot of, um, you know, importers and wineries are doing. They have a lot of business to be done. And so let's just take away the stress, call it, you know, with the event. And the funny thing is I still have this email that I had sent out and said, you know, while it's still quite likely we can have an event in a few weeks from now <laughs> which little did we know that you know it, it went on you know this is around the time we were all thinking oh this is it's gonna be a crazy month ahead of us um it's uh but you know it's um the wineries who we had accepted uh for that edition we welcomed them back anyone who wanted to come back was automatically in and then otherwise we just put it in the application system to round it out and uh yeah we're really excited with what we have it's a it's a very exciting list where are we with our time okay so uh here's what we're going to do we're going to take a quick break yeah gather our thoughts i've got my lists um I, we can't do them all because there's that's just crazy um but i will ask you to do uh, some thumbnails starting with the a and working down okay if you're ready um you've got my list starting with ashes and diamonds when we come back we start All with right. Ashton Diamonds and Bruna Grimaldi and Bella and Ben Brady. Wait, and we're going through the alphabets. Uh, this <laughs> is Casey Wim Radio with Curtis Colt. Top Drop 22 is about to uh, drop, and we'll give you those dates in just a moment. This is Tasty Wim Radio. He's Curtis Colt. I'm Terry David Mulligan. This is Top Drop 22. I've been waiting months to do this interview with Curtis. That I so enjoy that the conversation. And I so enjoy this event. I think it's just one of the highlights of the year on, on some occasions, in some moments, the highlight of the year. Um, uh, what are the dates? Uh, May 10 and May 11, we are uh, expanding to uh, uh, two days at uh, uh, the roundhouse um, uh, just because, uh, yeah, we want to make sure people have some elbow room and are very comfortable. And uh, you know, we're not, we're, we're not, um, um, we're, we're not big on, you know, making the room shoulder to shoulder and feeling overly, you know, bustly. We, we want people to have time to, uh, you know, chat with the winemakers and the tenants, okay. et cetera. Just a couple of things. Uh, what are the numbers? How many people over the last, well, the last time you, you, uh, were, uh, running and up and functioning, uh, how many people came through? So, uh, we would generally have about 300 people at the event. We're oh, raining good. it into about 200. Uh, for this, okay. for this that's place. because and, and i like you thinking we don't want people 
bumping into one another. You have to have, you have, to have room. You know, it's not like it's not like a drive through. You're going to spend your, <laughs> your hours in there and you want to enjoy it. Right. No, absolutely. And, you know, the, the point of our event is that we want you to have these, you know, meaningful conversations and really get to know these winemakers and principals and attendants taste through their wines. You know, th this isn't about, you know, doing a run of how many wines you can taste uh, within a few hours. You know, we, we, we want there to be meaningful conversations and getting to know these places because we stand behind each and every winery that's going to be in the room. Well, you, you just led directly to my next question. That is, what do you ask of them as, what do you look for in each of these uh, candidates? And secondly, what do you ask of them to bring? Yeah, uh, so what we look for, you know, we, we want authentic wine and it's not a matter, we, you know, we don't look at size of winery or output, but, you know, are, are you making, you know, authentic wines of place, terroir focused wines, Without too much manipulation, we want wines where, um, uh, you know, decisions are being made by the winemaker, not yeah. by a marketing board. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so that's the important thing uh, uh, f for us, that these are just authentic wines of place and that have uh, great stories behind them. Okay. And, and in terms of, do you ask them for uh, um, a certain amount of pours? Uh, we kind of leave that up to them, you know, uh, um, you know, minimum having, you know, uh, uh, two or three, some to line up, you know, 10 of them, uh, it's always yeah. a good mix in the room, but, uh, <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, it ends up being a good balance. I learned so much from this event and I thank you for, uh, once again, bringing it back. It's top drop 22. All right. Starting with the, the A's, as I say, we can't do them all. So we're just going to do the best we can. And I will mispronounce about half of them. Um, <laughs> Ashes and Diamonds, Napa Valley. Uh, Kashi uh, Khalidi is the uh, proprietor uh, of, of the place. Um, uh, he was actually, his background is an executive in the music business with uh, um, Virgin Universal Music and, and, wow. and, and so on. And his winery is kind of a throwback to more, I want to say old school California wines that weren't, uh, you know, 14, 15, 16 percent big, you know, boozy bums. These are, uh, you know, reds that are hovering around, you know, mid 12 to mid 13 percent. Uh, very fresh and uh, uh, lively wines that we're uh, quite excited about. He has a, a Cabernet Franc that I think some people would think is a little bit more of a Loire style than uh, uh, Napa. But, you know, we got some good juicy cab as well. Uh, here's my first uh, pronunciation. Zenda, you say it to me and then I'll say it. Go. Oh, what do you, where are we? Zenda Agricola Bruna Grimaldi. Bruna Grimaldi. Uh, Grimaldi. Uh, so from, uh, you know, Piedmont, uh, we have some Arnais, so nice, uh, uh, you know, flinty, crisp uh, whites. And then Nebbiolo, uh, which is, you know, the heart of, um, uh, of uh, the Barolo uh, region. Uh, so, you know, juicy red high acid, um, and, you know, definitely, you know, food wines, which will be uh, quite exciting. Bella, uh, the great Jay Drysdale, I need more Gamay. <laughs> uh, British Columbia's first, and I think still only, 100% sparkling house, based yeah. on the Naramata bench, which is your old stomping grounds. Um, uh, Jay does single vineyard sparkling wines, from uh, uh, vineyards up and down uh, the valley, uh, everything from traditional method uh, champagne style to pet nets, which all the kids love. And uh, um, yeah, we're really excited to have uh, Bella. Bella has poured in the room, I think two times before. And, um, you know, they are definitely proponents of, uh, you know, sparkling wine, not only being a Friday night thing, but being a Tuesday night. Thing as well yeah, as Jay's Dry, Jay, Jay Drysdale is guaranteed to have something under the table. It's just he's that kind <laughs> of because he's always experimenting with stuff. So absolutely. And, uh, all right. And you want to stop next to a Benjamin Bridge, uh, one of the great success stories in the world of wine anywhere, but let alone just in the tidal bay of, um, of Nova Scotia. And the, uh, the the very handsome, extremely talented Jean, Jean Benoit Delorier is coming. Yes, uh, this is, uh, they've been to Top Drop before, um, you know, Vancouver has an affinity, affinity for uh, Benjamin Bridge, 
you know, they are all the way on the other side of the country, but um, they are wines that work well here. A lot of uh, sparkling, uh, traditional method, uh, fresh, lively uh, wine, some of them from uh, um, very unique uh, um, uh, varieties. They have some of the biggest tides in the world there, um, which uh, um, are good for moderating uh, temperature and climate and uh, keeping things nice and uh, lively in the bottle. Curtis Colt, uh, one of the organizers of Top Drop 22, uh, coming your way in May. We'll give you the dates. Uh, what's the website, please? Uh, topdrop.ca. Topdrop.ca. You can get all the details. Now, um, Tree Ring schooled me on Prosecco uh, not too long ago uh, over here in Victoria. And she was pouring uh, eight uh, Proseccos from uh, Valdebianadini. Yeah. And you have uh, one coming. Yeah, we do. You know, it's a popular category, uh, you know, great uh, um, food wine. And um, they're just, uh, you know, very charismatic and fun and, and delicious. And so, um, yes, there is always room for Prosecco at our uh, communal table. But especially from Val Valdebianadini, because it's the home. It, it literally is... Uh, has been deemed uh, an essential part of the planet, not to be messed with. No, no, yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, um, so, you know, it, it, it's great. There are a lot of global takes on uh, the style, but you have to go to the homeland for the real stuff, and we're uh, happy to share it. I would be uh, very surprised if you didn't, by the way, uh, have somebody from Umbria, um, uh, and you have uh, Francesco Stranges, uh, the proprietor and winemaker from Pergua. Per, per, per uh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, there are so many uh, indigenous uh, grape varieties in Italy, uh, wines of place. So, you know, I think we're pretty uh, Italian strong um, uh, this year, which is uh, never a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's great. We have uh, uh, Chiori um, uh, from uh, Umbria. They have their Bricchetto, their Sangiovese, um, which, you know, a lot of people are used to Sangiovese it's from Tuscany, from Chianti Classico. This one is from Umbria. Um, so, yes, lots of... Uh, um, uh, fun places to play around let me try that one uh chiori perugia chiori perugia yeah perugia 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 <laughs> no g okay that's that's how i go yeah you have a cider showing up creek and gullet well a hey, great cider creek and no gullet. yeah Naramata, um, uh, the Simonson family, uh, um, doing some really great ciders there. I, I think that they're very wine-esque um, in, in, in their style. A lot of elegance, some of them made in that traditional method, uh, champagne uh, um, uh, kind of way. They have uh, uh, some of the oldest organic uh, apple orchards in the Okanagan and uh, really excited to uh, share their things um their their wares there's just yeah a, a lot of fun stuff that they're um that that they're doing um uh Annalise who's a family member uh she is going to be there along with uh, Alyssa who is the uh cider maker there um they make some of their ciders with grape must so kind of hybrid uh wine nice. cider uh bottlings yeah really fun stuff as much as I enjoyed the, uh, and still do enjoy the craft beer uh, rollout and the explosion that happened, sure. I am thrilled with the ciders being made and, and, and still force myself to go back to the original dry cider that they started with, because there's lots of flavors and lots of uh, things going on, but just, uh, you can get carried away by it. If you just start with the uh, dry cider and work out from there, I'm, and they're fun people. I like that. Yeah, no, it, it's uh, um, it's great. They are pioneers on the bench, and uh, um, and I know that they are looking forward to visiting the big city. Fitz, one of the bubble houses that we all love. Fitz, uh, never enough sparkling in the room. Uh, Gordon Fitzpatrick was uh, uh, founder of Cedar Creek um, uh, Winery in Kelowna. He is now at uh, uh, what has been the family vineyard for a uh, couple generations now uh, um, across the, the lake in Peachland on the edge of Summerland there. And we rich. have, uh, yeah, the Fitz Brute. We're going to be pouring the Fitz Brute from 2017. So nice, nice little bit of age on it. Nice. As well, um, we have um, their Fitz Brute Extra Lees that has uh, uh, 
was uh, um, going through that secondary ferment on that uh, uh, yeast in the bottle for 66 months. Yeah. So for those who love that fresh baked bread, sourdough kind of brioche note in their uh, bubble, uh, that's what they're going to want to look out for. I uh, digress for a moment. I had uh, was handed a bottle of uh, 2017 uh, Unsworth bubble um, yesterday, yeah. by Chris Turek. And I, I asked the same question. I said, it's a 2017. How much better does it get? He said, it'll, it'll, you, can, you can lay it down and walk away and forget about it, but it's breaking great right now. No, absolutely. And that's, you know, one of my favorite things for, uh, you know, if you're cellaring wine, if you want to hold on to wine, start a little collection. Local sparkling is something that's affordable and, you know, can definitely go the distance. You'll know Matt Dumain is in the room because you'll hear him. Uh, he's pouring <laughs> free for <laughs> He's pouring free form by Okanagan Crush Pad. Well, uh, we welcome him back. Yes, uh, he'll be there with uh, uh, Daryl Brooker, um, who is now at the helm of uh, uh, that company and is a, a local legend. What, what a team they got there. Oh, it, 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 it really is. And so along with their sparkling, of course, because we can't get enough uh, uh, sparkling, um, we uh, uh, have a Van Gris, um, so um, yeah, uh, a Pinot Gris, uh, sorry, Pinot Noir that's been done with a, a little bit of skin contact, so Pinot Noir made a little bit more like a uh, white wine, they're rosé, um, and uh, you know, they are of the uh, uh, natural wine bent, and so uh, always good to have them in the room, they've participated a few times before, and uh, we love having them, they're a good time. Do I see Geki Can there uh, uh, from uh, Folsom, California? Um, yeah, a little, little sake. Um, uh, you know, a company that uh, uh, straddles uh, some of their um, um, uh, sake making habits in California, some of it in Japan. And uh, yeah, we just wanted to uh, uh, include some uh, sake uh, at this time, some unique bottlings. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a style that a lot of people love, but don't know that much about and so it'll be great to uh, you know chat with principals and to be able to uh, you know have your questions answered and learn more about the category is this within sight of the prison it, I, I don't know we can ask them because they will <laughs> okay, be can, here well, i see Folsom. there's only one address that we know of um <laughs> right, we're going to take a break he is curtis colt and we are talking about top drop 22 in a fabulous event coming up in may and we'll give you the dates uh, you can go to uh, topdrop.ca uh, uh, for all, all of your information grab your ticket while you can because you know it's going to sell out you know it's going to sell out i'm just giving you a heads up as best you can um main event will take place 7 to 9 30 on tuesday and wednesday may the 10th and 11th at yale town's roundhouse community center the one with the train is the train still there i think it is okay fine i um, hope so that's why we do it we're gonna take a break when we come back Hedges, Lightning Rock, Long Shadows. Oh, my goodness, the list is crazy. This is Tasting Room Radio. That's a break. Now, uh, I, I know that your phone is probably dipping and swimming. Um, how, much time have you got, how much time have you got left? Ten minutes. Is that okay? All right, here we go. Ready? Yep. This is Tasting Room Radio, Terry David Mulligan. And we're, we're doing this special on Top Drop 22 because I love Top Drop, and I really like Curtis Colt. Uh, even more now. Um, it, it grows. It grows on your friends. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to do a lightning round. Okay, a little uh, yes. speed. Round. Okay, we're in the H's, Hedges family estate, um, of Red Mountain, the famous Red Mountain, and Christopher Christoph Hedges is coming. Yeah, he's uh, uh, he's such a great guy. So family winery who have been doing some amazing things in the uh, uh, Red Mountain AVA. Um, you know, good blockbuster Cabernet Merlot uh, blends and, and so on. They do some fantastic Syrah, just like we do in the Okanagan. Um, and uh, uh, some really fun uh, cuvées, some aged stuff that they're bringing as well. And uh, Christoph is, uh, he knows the lay of the land in uh, Washington State quite well. So not only can he speak well to the winery, but to the region. Has there been a better buzz uh, wine uh, winery in the, in the last little while than Lightning Rock? Nope. Uh, the, Jordan and Tyler. Jordan is, you know, many say she's arguably the, the best sparkling winemaker uh, in the Okanagan. And there's a lot of good ones. Um, uh, good ones. You know, she, she used to be at Okanagan Crush Pad, as uh, you and I both know. Uh, Lightning Rock in Summerland. Um, they're doing some great single vineyard uh, um, sparklings, plus a little bit of uh, uh, Pinot Noir and uh, uh, Viognier, but really exciting um, stuff. And um, 
and Jordan, you know, she's, uh, she, she's amazing. She's uh, one of our best winemakers, super uh, just approachable and fun and, and everything. But if you want to talk nitty gritty and, you know, get into the, the numbers right. and details, she's gotcha. Long Shadows is quite a story of uh, Columbia Valley. It's it, it, the whole idea initially was to bring uh, famous winemakers, uh, famous Riesling winemakers to come to Washington and make, uh, co-make uh, Rieslings with someone local who was also famous. Is that the same uh, format these days? It is, yes. Uh, so uh, global winemakers, you know, come and uh, get their feet wet in uh, um, uh, uh, in Washington State, you know, which is pretty fun. So a little bit experimental, but, you know, it's not overly experimental because uh, these are people with incredible pedigree. Um, there's some really uh, fun, juicy calves and Merlots that you're going to see at that table. Marchese di Barolo. Oh my God, Marchese di Barolo. The Abono <laughs> family, Abono family are just the sweetest people ever. Uh, they are, in fact, uh, Jason Yamasaki, who is the um, uh, the beverage director for the Joey Wine Group, and his wife Jenna Briscoe, who runs Cafe Medina here. She teaches for the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. They actually got married at Marchese di Barolo. You know, they are wine folks, and they're not going to get married just anywhere. Uh, so that 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 shows you how uh, close and important that place is to um, many of us. Valentina Abona is uh, um, the daughter of one of the uh, co-proprietors, and um, she is an encyclopedia of, um, you know, what you need to know about Barolo, not just okay. about uh, uh, the winery. Right. And um, yeah, everyone needs to stop by and see them. Fantastic. All right, fine. Um, uh, the, the star of the Okanagan, uh, and yet still under the radar, the Kiwi, Shane Munn and Martin's <laughs> Lane Winery. Uh, yes, yeah, so maybe put on a timer when you talk to him, because otherwise you'll never get away. He uh, <laughs> has the gift of gab. Um, uh, he's yeah. a lovely guy, and he is making some of the best uh, Rieslings and Pinot Noirs um, in, in the Valley, all uh, single site yep. and uh, uh, beautiful uh, uh, winery as, as well. But, um, you know, Riesling and Pinot Noir are two of the best varieties that we work with, and uh, uh, he can really drill down and uh, share the stories of them. I know who won't be fishing the Similkameen River in May. It would be a John Weber at Orofino because he'd be a <laughs> John of Virginia Weber will be in town. Um, my wife and I actually just stayed with them last week. They are wonderful, wonderful oh, Were you people. in the guest house? Were you in the uh, guest house? Uh, uh, no, we, we were at the house. We're VIPs, Terry. You know that. <laughs> We, <laughs> well, I've been in the I've been in the basement. I love the basement suite. No, no, the uh, uh, the guest house are are standing there, but um, um, John and Virginia have been ambassadors of the Similkameen Valley and why it's important, sure. why it is uh, unique and different from the Okanagan, uh, not only because of that very famous Similkameen wind uh, that happens every day that keeps things nice and dry, that allows everyone to uh, farm, you know, uh, uh, towards an organic. Uh, um, style of doing things um a bunch of awesome rieslings Syrahs, and and whatever else they bring and they're just wonderful people and i i'm i'm just so happy that they're going to be in the room and this year at top drop you have um not only salcetto from tuscany but you have the winemaker as well i do uh yeah we're super um um excited uh michele manelli is, is going to be there and um like i said you know we have a good amount of uh italy um we have some uh you know solid multiple channel uh um some uh you know sangiovese all over the place really exciting okay we have five minutes left friends i'm going to take a quick break here when we come back with curtis colt we will take you through synchro mesh terra vista ursa major um and i'll butcher a name from uh germany uh this is a tasting room <laughs> i'm terry david mulligan curtis colt talking about top drop uh, 22 doing the entire show is he was a, a heroic figure in my world friends uh because few can do it uh top drop i'm going to warn you once again the tickets will go. It's an experience you will never forget. You'll talk about it for the rest of your uh, year and perhaps your life. And what, what you'll end up doing is when you go to other festivals, you will start to think about, oh, man, I'd like to, you know, we'd like to do a little more top drop and a little less of this. You'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Synchromesh wines are coming from Okanagan Falls, Alan Dickinson. 
Alan Dickinson uh, is uh, one of the best Riesling winemakers in the country. Um, there is a, a whole bunch of them. He also makes a Cabernet Franc that is really uh, nice and light, fresh and, and, and breezy and, uh, uh, and a great farmer. And that's important. So, uh, yes, they're a, um, um, a must see. Terra Vista Vineyards, Naramata Bench, uh, Nadine Ullander. Yeah, uh, Nadine is the uh, uh, winemaker there. Um, it's uh, really fun. They're playing around with some fun varieties, um, Albarino, Verdeo, and, and so on. But those, you know, crisp, lively, white uh, varieties do work well uh, in, our, in our climate. Um, they're very fresh and uh, uh, really great wines to go with our West Coast seafood, Asian cuisine, and, and so on. And uh, always happy to have more neuromatic content. He was an actor, still could be an actor, frankly. Rajan Tour, the winemaker, grower, and proprietor, Ursa Major Winery. Um, you know the uh, natural wine bent that they have. They, uh, you know, the all the cool kids love Ursa Major, and but for good reason. Uh, the the wines are fresh and lively. They're very alive. They have hilarious um, uh, names. One of them is called "For There It Is, Cracked <laughs> in a Hundred Shivers." <laughs> which is a Cabernet Sauvignon, obviously. Uh, um, Ursa Major, it's really great to have them uh, on, on board. Uh, Rajan Tour, who is the principal, he's the owner. He is uh, also oversees the farming and everything. These are legit wines and uh, people should not miss them. You have the proprietor, uh, Christoph Thorl. Is that his last name? Yes. Yeah. A uh, little, you know, Riesling. We have so much Riesling in the room. It would be a shame to not have uh, some German content. So um, uh, uh, the Thoral uh, Winery, um, they are based in the Rheinhessen. Um, nice. And uh, so we have Christoph, uh, family member, uh, uh, winemaker, farmer, all of that. And some uh, Rieslings kind of running uh, uh, the scales from uh, dry to uh um lovingly off dry so exciting and finally um, the, the australians would have to be there douglas elliott the north american manager for xanadu uh, winery margaret river margaret river west coast of uh, australia love xanadu love margaret river uh, you know their cabernets you get that um you know when you talk terroir you get that salty sea air you get that eucalypt um and everything it's uh it's always good when you get to Margaret River Cab on a blind tasting because, you know, you just get those elements so strong. Uh, really uh, exciting part of the world that not many people get a chance to go to. It is, you know, fairly isolated, uh, um, you know, part of the world there in West Australia. And so it's uh, really exciting that they are making the way all over, all over uh, uh, the oceans landing here in Vancouver. How many different Italian wineries? Do you, do you know the number? Oh, my goodness. No, a lot. Uh, would, is a it lot. Ten, maybe 10, 12? 10, let's say 10. Let's say 12, a dozen, a dozen. Okay. Maybe a dozen. I'll give you a dozen. <laughs> Fair. Uh, oh, and all right, listen, early bird the tickets. No, wait a minute. They're gone now. They're gone yeah. now. Uh, uh, it's going to be, um, uh, here's the deal. The main event, the top drop 20. Why would I do it? You're sitting right here. The main event, when does it take place? May 10th and 11th at the Roundhouse in Vancouver. Proceeds go to the BC Hospitality Foundation, uh, which is a charity that supports those in the hospitality industry, industry yep. facing a ma major uh, medical crisis. Um, tickets are $125, uh, which is less than three bucks a winery uh, in, in the room. So fun. Uh, and I would urge you to go to uh, topdrop.ca simply because the, the list is there and you can un understand we couldn't talk about them all but it's in a very impressive impressive list as as you always expect from top drop um curtis after this yeah i know you're going do you want to have another highlight for this year that you're looking forward to or are you going to organize or are you just going to be part of anything you want to blow up right now <laughs> you know what I, I i'm going to stay with top drop and say that we also have some fun regional tables we have wines of bordeaux we have uh, uh, wines of uh, uh, South Africa, and we Please. have a wine Australia table that's going to have a little bit of uh, uh, everything from all over the place. So make sure uh, people hit those tables as well. Have a great year. All right. You too, sir. Welcome back. We'll see you at Top Drop. <laughs> Curtis Colt, topdrop.ca. This has been Tasting Room Radio. <laughs>